welcome to Bethany Baptist Church, Sisters Who Care, Seventh Annual Tea. My name is Wanda Thurmond, I'm the Mistress of Ceremony, and today we will begin the tea with scripture and prayer that will be led by Reverend Jay Doyle. I want to be able to thank all who are partaking in the mission tea and supporting the tea as well as serving as one of the ministers. My name is Reverend James Doyle. I'm going to come from the theme with Relentless coming from Matthew 25 verses 35 and 36. And it read, For I was in hunger, and you got given me meat. I was thirsty, and you got given me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Let us pray. Father God, I want to say thank you once again for this day, Lord. We thank you right now for giving us life and strength. Father God, we're praying for this tea, praying, Father God, for those who are sick and shut in, asking right now to let the mission grow, both spiritually and in numbers as well, Father God, to be able to do your will and elevate your kingdom. Asking right now to bless the mission, Father God, and other churches as well, let everyone come together. Asking right now to be able to just go ahead and just anoint, Father God, anoint the individuals who are partaking in this, Father God, and ask to let this be able to grow uh, to your will and to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and amen. Good afternoon. We are so excited that you have joined us for our annual tea. We are the Sisters Who Care at Bethany Baptist Church. We're sisters who care, who make disciples, who make disciples, who live on a mission. Our watchword for this year is relentless and it's found in Hebrew 10 and 39. And the scripture reads, but we are not of them who draw back unto prejudition, but of them that believe in the saving of the souls. We are grateful that you're here. We want you to be inspired, to be enlightened, to be encouraged, to be relentless, to follow Matthew 25, 35 through 36, which talks to us about feeding those that are hungry, clothing those that are naked, visiting those that are in prison, which you will find or hear more as the program go on with our guest speaker. There are many nuggets that we have today that we would like for you to enjoy. Please sit back, enjoy the program. Know that you are, we are excited and grateful that you're here. Thank you. Next, we have a solo by Sister Pamela Scott, My Redeemer Lives. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who told the moon where to hide till evening? And whose words alone? a falling star. Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer. He lives. All of creation testifies and this life That same God runs to the wind. 
weary, the broken and the weak, and those same gentle hands that holds me when I'm broken, well they conquer death to bring me victory. She was relentless and she finished well. Once upon a time there was a teeny tiny lady. The teeny tiny lady lived in a teeny tiny house. She had a teeny tiny dog. She drove a teeny tiny car to a teeny tiny job. Well, one day the teeny tiny lady came home and she had a rather, shall we say, difficult time at work. And all she wanted to do was sit down in her teeny tiny chair in front of a teeny tiny TV, have a teeny tiny meal, and then take a long nap. Well, as she was waiting on her teeny tiny meal to finish, all of a sudden, she heard a voice that wasn't so teeny tiny. The voice said, give me back. Oh, no, give me back this house. It's mine. And you've got to go. Now the teeny tiny lady was afraid because why would somebody, why would a voice say, give me back? This is my house. And she was sitting there and she didn't know what to do. And, and, and all of a sudden, he said again, I said, this is my house. You've got to get out. Now, this little lady, this teeny tiny lady, in her teeny tiny abode, with all of her teeny tiny surroundings, was really, really afraid. So she didn't know what to do again. And, and as the voice was about to say it again, that's what she felt in her spirit, all of a sudden, she remembered that she heard something at church about being relentless, that she could always finish well. And how she interpreted that was by her being relentless, she was going to move forward no matter what was going on because she knew she had God at her side, in front of her, and behind her. So all of a sudden, when the voice said, I told you to get out, she pulled from the recesses of her stomach all the way to her chest, to her head, and it came out of her mouth. No! You get out! And you know what that voice said? Okay. Bye. You see, she had learned that no matter what kind of obstacles that come around you, no matter if you need to eat, if you need a place to stay, if you're having some things in your head, I mean, you know, depression, which is okay to acknowledge that you have it, you can get rid of it. And she knew that if she was relentless, if she kept pushing through, she could take on anything. You know, the Bible verse says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't say, yea, though I part. So as she began to think about it, and she told that thing to get out, she knew that from this day forward, no matter what came her way, she was going to be relentless. She was going to push through because she knew that with God, she had strength. And she was going to be the best that she could be with her strength in the Lord. Love you like the sunshine. Next, we have a guest soloist, Miss Nevaeh Young, who will be introduced by her grandmother, Sister Jean Young. Good afternoon. 
Bethany's women mission, Sisters Who Care, are always on a mission year round. We have a young lady who's going to sing for us who's also on a mission. She's been on a mission since she was three years old, and that was to become a gospel recording artist. In January 21, she produced, directed, and organized her own live concert. She is a senior at New Caney High School. She's 17 years old. And I hope that you enjoy her music today. And I'd like to bring up Nevaeh Young. than the sun and the stars you're bigger than the things home oh, that can tear me apart and for I know you're great in all the earth for I know you're great in all the earth you're, you're bigger oh, You're bigger than the problems I faced You're bigger than the disasters I've seen You're bigger, you're so much bigger, Jesus Than what this life may bring Hold on air You're bigger than the universe Yes, you are. You're bigger than the sun and the stars. You're bigger than the things, bigger than the things that can tell me apart. For I know you're so great. You're so great. Oh, for I know you're so great. You're so. In all of the earth, earth, you're bigger, 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 bigger. You're bigger, Jesus, bigger than anything that I've seen. You're bigger, bigger, oh Lord, yeah. You're bigger, yes you are. You're Today is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made and his word says what? We should rejoice and be glad in it. We can rejoice because this is a day that wasn't promised to any of us. And yet here we are able to connect with other sisters and brothers in Christ in person and virtually, able to be with our families, able to continue to serve. God is certainly a good God. He has given us health. He has given us strength. 
He has given us grace and mercy. In spite of us, he continues to show up in our lives. God continues to advocate on our behalf, and he, he even continues to put us on the minds and hearts of others, even when we are not even in the room. He continues to be our peace when we are sometimes the one causing the chaos, even in the midst of trying to determine what the foreseeable future looks like for our families, our co-workers, for our ministries. We can take all of our cares to the Lord. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test of time, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Hello, Bethany. It is a good day when you know the Lord. I am Tamiko Jones, and I currently serve as an associate minister of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Mansfield, Texas, under the direction of Dr. Michael A. Evans, Sr. I also have the privilege to serve as the executive director treasurer for WMU of Texas, the lead ministry for sisters who care for the state of Texas. I need to say, first of all, thank you. Thank you to Sister Georgia Johnson and Sister Pamela Loftus for reaching out to me with the invitation to join you for the occasion of your annual tea. Thank you also to Pastor Hall and First Lady Hall for this opportunity to share. In light of your theme, relentless, finishing well, I love that because it's important that we finish well, I would like to speak to you from the subject, just hold on. Just hold on. Turn with me to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Now, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation version. I, I really need the word to be playing for you today. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Beginning at verse 17, it says, Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines. And even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, and even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. Encourage yourself again and say, just hold on, be relentless and finish well. I can imagine that some of you, some of you have a testimony from this week alone, maybe even from today, where you needed the Lord to show up. When things didn't go according to plan, when the test of the testimony was one you didn't see coming, when you had to cry out on bended knee because the weight of this world was too much for you to handle alone. Every now and then we ought to turn over to the book of Job and tell God, though you slay me, Lord, yet I will trust you. Every now and then we have to fall on our knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Every now and then when our bodies are racked with pain, we have to say when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. If you know who the Lord is, if you believe his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you, if you know that you have been equipped to stand, then you hold on. The questions of life are many. Two of the most vexing questions are why do the righteous suffer and why does God often appear to remain silent? Habakkuk asked these questions, but the answers didn't come 
the way he thought they would. Habakkuk, this is the minor prophet who found he must alter his perspective on the ways of God with mankind. Habakkuk provides us one of the most remarkable sections in all of scripture. And as it contains an extended dialogue between Habakkuk and God, that's chapters one through two, the prophet initiated this conversation based on his distress about God's in action in the world. Now we know God is everywhere at all times and he's never inactive, but sometimes we have to be still and wait on him. Habakkuk wanted to see God do something more, particularly in the area of justice for evildoers. The book of Habakkuk pictures a frustrated prophet, much like Jonah. Though Habakkuk channeled his frustration into prayers and eventually into praise to God, rather than trying to run from the Lord as Jonah did. Sometimes, now, I may be by myself in this, but I don't think I am. I believe there are some watching this right now that can agree with me that sometimes you must have a little talk with Jesus to tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear the faintest cry and what? He will answer by and by. Now, Habakkuk acknowledges the sinfulness of Judah. They were oppressing the poor, worshiping idols, and ignoring God's law. But he is shocked because God is planning to use Babylon to punish his own people, Judah, even though the Babylonians are far more wicked than the people of Judah. Habakkuk's first complaint comes at the beginning of chapter 1, verse 2. He says, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. His second complaint comes not long after that in chapter 1, verse 12, where he says, O Lord, my God, my Holy One, you who are eternal, surely, surely you do not plan to wipe us out. O Lord, our rock, you have sent these Babylonians to correct us, to punish us for our many sins. Even with these complaints and questions, God hears and he answers Habakkuk. Included in chapter 2 are two very familiar responses from God. Chapter 2, verse 2 says, write the vision and make it plain so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It does describe the end and it will be fulfilled if it seems slow in coming. Wait patiently for it will surely take place and it won't be delayed. Chapter two, verse four says, the just shall live by faith. So the book of Habakkuk offers us a picture of a prideful people being humbled while the righteous live by faith in God. It reminds us that while God may seem silent and uninvolved in our world, he always has a plan to deal with evil and always works out justice in his timing. The example of the prophet Habakkuk encourages believers to wait on the Lord, expecting that he will indeed work out all things for our good. As we continue <coughs> and consider the prophet of Habakkuk, excuse me, I want to give you a few essentials for holding on, or as your theme says, finishing well. Holding on requires prayer. I know there are some intercessors watching this, and you know, because of your calling to be an intercessor, that prayer certainly is necessary. God's word tells us that, and that it certainly changes things. Habakkuk's prophecy was directed to a world that, through the eyes of God's people, must have seemed on the edge of disaster. If you look at the news today, if you just go outside, the world seems on the edge of a disaster. Even when the northern kingdom had been destroyed in 722 BC, God's people remained in Judah. However, with another powerful foreign army fighting them, Faithful people, people like Habakkuk were wondering what God was doing. Hadn't he given the land to his people? Would he not take it away? 
Habakkuk's prayer of faith, as chapter 3 is referred to, for the remainder of God's people in the face of such destruction still stands today as a remarkable witness of true faith and undying hope. How many of you can testify that prayer changes things? You may not see a change in the situation immediately, but there will be a change in your perspective. He may not change that situation, but he may change you in the midst of that situation. Have you ever been so down that you felt like you didn't have the words to pray? Sometimes you just have to moan, and I promise you, God knows what that moan means. But if you could just change your posture and get in the prayer position by the time you got up, your burdens felt a little bit lighter, your heart was a little bit stronger, and your mind, your mind was a lot clearer. Spending time in prayer gives us holy confidence. It gives us boldness. 1 John 5 and 14 says that this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Habakkuk knew this. We're told in chapter 2 that he climbed up to his watchtower to stand at his guard post. There, he waited to see what the Lord would say and how he would answer his complaint. Habakkuk fully expected God to answer, God to do just what he said, and for God to move. Praying with expectation and at anticipation can calm you in the midst of the storm. It's something about praying when you know who holds the key, who holds the answer, and who can answer according to his will and his timing. So holding on or finishing well requires prayer, but it also requires trust. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord, no matter what. That is Habakkuk's message for God's people today. Believers can and must trust in God no matter how tumultuous outward circumstances may become. No matter what it looks like, we have to trust the Lord. In chapter 3, verse 2, he says, Lord, I have heard the report about you and I fear. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years. Make it known in wrath. Please, God, I can hear him. Remember mercy. Habakkuk based his confidence on his petition on the work of God in the past. He's saying, I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. And this time of our deepest need, help us again as you did in the years gone by. And in your anger, please, Lord, remember your mercy. How many of you choose to believe the report of the Lord? In this life, above what the doctors say, what the lawyers say, what the government says, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Even after hearing a message of destruction to come, Habakkuk remains steadfast in his belief that God is in control even through distress, that God will bless those who believe. We have seen a lot happen over the last 18 to 24 months in 2020 and in 2021, much of it due to COVID-19, this global pandemic we've been dealing with, deaths, loss of jobs, increased crime, social unrest. But in spite of it all, in spite of it all, will you choose to believe the report of the Lord? Will you just trust him? Holding on, finishing well, requires us to trust the Lord. And finally, holding on requires us to praise. It requires us to praise the Lord. There's nothing like praise that can change the atmosphere. You could be in the midst of a bad situation, but if you can start singing and, and shouting unto the Lord and just praising him for who he is, even though things around you are just falling apart, you can praise him in the midst of that storm. Holding on and finishing well requires us to praise. The third chapter of Habakkuk is a prayer in the form of a psalm. Like the Psalms of David, it even has an instrument cue. Habakkuk starts his hymn of praise with praise. He knows what God has done for his people in the past and asks that he do it again, even though he 
He's angry. He recalls God coming to Mount Sinai and delivering Israel via plagues and pillars of fire. There's the usual imagery of God thundering upon the earth, causing the ground to shake and the sea to roar. Habakkuk knows that God will bash in the heads of the evil. After shaking in his boots, the word says he shakes in his boots, Habakkuk finds some kind of inner calm because he knows that deliverance will come. Even though things will get very bad, he'll get through it because God is his strength. By the time we get to verse 17, Habakkuk is praising and praying his way through. He demonstrates that his ultimate faith in God, even if he doesn't fully understand what's going on, he demonstrates his ultimate faith is in God. Regardless of how bleak the situation becomes, Habakkuk promises to watch, to wait, and to hope for the Lord to act. Say watch, wait, and hope for the Lord to act. Hold on. Just hold on. In Psalms 40, verse 1, David says, I waited and waited and waited some more patiently knowing God would come through for me. Then at last, he bent down and listened to my cry. Saints, you are equipped to finish well. You are equipped to hold on. Hold on in the face of adversity. Hold on when you need more than what you got. Hold on when your family is under attack. Hold on when your marriage is under attack because there was one who walked the earth and experienced every heartache. The only one who truly knows what you may be going through. One who died so that we might have hope so that we will know even in the middle of it that when it's all said and done, we have the victory. His name is Jesus. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. God has a way of meeting us at the point of our need. Regardless of your situation, you can trust God and hold on. You have been given what it takes to be relentless and to finish well. All of the Bible studies, all of the time in church, all of the, the opportunities to serve those that may or may not look like you, all of those things have equipped you for such a time as this. You have what you need to be relentless, to finish well. And I pray that God blesses you and that he keeps you as you do so. May God richly bless you. May he continue to pour into you, pour into your ministry, and give you what you need to be able to carry out the assignment he has given to you so that you might finish well. God bless you, Bethany. Take care. And next, as our special guest, we have Prayer View a and University Chamber Choir, and they will be singing the selection Show show laza, which means freedom. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
and I am so excited to be here with you today. Thank you for the invitation to participate in your annual tea party. I want to give a special thanks to the Sisters Who Care Missions Ministry team for putting on this special event, African Elegance. As you can see, I couldn't wait to get dressed up today in my African attire. I love an opportunity to get dressed up. I wish we were face to face, but of course we know that the world pandemic is still lingering on and that prevents us from getting together today. I wanna to thank you for your longstanding support of Make It Matter and our mission objectives. Thank you for sending people on mission trips with us to help build homes for needy families in Haiti and in Jamaica. For the next few minutes, I'm just going to talk to you about uh, what we've been doing, give you an update, show you a few pictures, and then talk to you about how you can get involved. So I'm just going to adjust my screen here and share with you some slides that I have prepared. All right, I think you can see that. And as I mentioned before, I'm Lynette Francois, and this is Make It Matter. And our objectives are simple. All we want to do is lead people to Christ, and we want to do that by meeting a physical need. The physical need that the Lord has put on our heart for this organization is to build a home. A home where people can raise their children, have, you know, family meals, and invite the community in. We do that by partnering together. We know that we are better together when we work together for the glory of the Lord. We partner with churches. We partner with community organizations. We partner with social organizations and just everyday people that have a heart to do something good for someone else. We build homes for needy families. We take teams on mission trips. And uh, we encourage people to get active in uh, humanitarian aid. All right. Now, today we're here to talk about building homes. The picture that you're looking at is of a recent home build in Jamaica. And we, our slogan is, we build homes and we extend hope. We extend people's hope that, you know, things will change and we'll try to change their story, whatever their story is. The average cost of a home is $3,500. Yeah, just $3,500. And the, room, the house behind you is considered a first room. So this is their first room of, that, of a future multi-room house. We would, this one here was built in 2021. No, in 2020, this one was built in 2020, the one you're looking here. And uh, we're here today to raise money for a build starting in 2022, okay? That's our objective here today. I'm going to show you some of the homes that Bethany has sponsored and built in the past. So this one that you're looking at is the Batiste family. And the Batiste family lives in Haiti. Bethany sponsored a home for them in 2019. And that Samuelson is there in the middle. And he was one of the sponsored children that Bethany Baptist Church had before... And then later on, you guys 
were so generous enough to build his family a house. So double blessings on the Samuelson Batiste family. Now last year, the Bethany uh, missions team sponsored a house for the Williams family. And the Williams family is in Jamaica. And the Williams family was living outside. They didn't have a durable home to live in, but now they do, thanks to the Bethany Baptist Church family. And you can see the Williamson family, the Williams family's here. So this is the mother holding the sign. This is the father here in the red shirt. There's three little boys, one here in a blue shirt, one being held by the father in some red pants, and then one over here to the left in a brown and orange shirt. So that's the family that's living in this home now that was uh, made, made, made possible by your donations and your efforts here in, in this tea party. Okay, so thank you for helping us change their story. The next slide I wanna share with you is just some of the other families of the 47 that I mentioned that have received homes and we've been able to work together to change their story. So one of my favorite pictures is down here at the um, bottom left where a little young girl is sticking her head out the door and her mom is trying her key in the new lock. And um, the orange bonnet is so authentic because uh, we know ourselves sometimes we are outside in our bonnets as well, whether they are orange and cute like this or they are orange and satin. Um, but nevertheless, she can wear whatever she wants as, if her key fits in the lock. So just a little side story about families. Um, I love it. And I hope you do too. So thank you for uh, letting us have this opportunity to give you this update today. All right, now this picture is a picture of the home building process. And so in the years that we are able to travel, some of the, these pictures would include maybe some faces like yours, mine, maybe an aunt or a cousin that is willing to travel with us on a mission trip. But last year, these homes were built by the generous support of the community itself. So the skilled craftsmen are there. So you can see some of them here in the green shirt and in the burgundy shirt. These are the folks that actually build homes for a living. And then you can see some of the volunteers, the woman in the pink shorts and the woman in the yellow shirt, they're volunteers. And uh, what's missing from this picture is you and I, because we were not able to travel there because of the borders being closed because of the world pandemic. But hopefully next year or the year after, whenever they clear it up, our faces will have an opportunity to be in these pictures as well. All right, cool. So now what we have is, um, I'm just gonna let this sit here for a sec. Give you an opportunity to see how the building process goes. Okay, there's shifting sand here. They're putting mortar on the house here. These people on the left at the top are bringing mortar to the places where they need to be. What an addition I would like to say about this slide is that when we sponsor a home, 
we're also creating an economy there. Um, we raised the money. So last year we raised $52,500 to sponsor the build for 15 homes. That money helps to support the economy there. We're putting people to work. Um, we're paying salaries. We are keeping uh, businesses working and in the black, I think they call it, uh, where they're moving goods and services continually to support this economy. And not to mention the people that have to provide lunch for these folks as they are building as well. So it's more than just a blessing for one family. It's a blessing for an entire community. All right. In a few minutes, you're going to see a video. And this video will talk, share with you uh, a little bit about what we're doing in Haiti. You'll see some of the homes that we built there when we, when we were allowed to go before all of this political and civil unrest. And we invite you to partner with us in, in future years as well. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for inviting us here and we hope you enjoy the video a little bit later. All right, so I'm suggesting that, hey, everyone in America, I think we can go out to eat, let's say Papados or Lupi Tortilla, <laughs> and easily spend $100 on a meal. I'm asking you guys to donate the hundred dollars this time and help us build homes for needy families help us change the story for a family it costs thirty five hundred dollars to build a home i believe with 35 people each giving a hundred dollars a piece we could get there today then there might also be a person in listening to this video that just might feel led to donate an entire house themselves, themselves and their families. And that's okay as well. And we would love that. We do have an opportunity to partake in corporate matching gifts. So Make It Matter is eligible for corporate matching gifts. So if you or someone in your family uh, works for a company that does corporate matching gifts, then everything that you donate, your company will match. So you just have to look in your company's database for Make It Matter Inc. and um, submit for your company match. So that way you essentially double your donations. All right, so I think we're almost done. I'm gonna invite you to stay connected with us. You can stay connected with us various ways. We have a website, makeitmatterinc.org. We have a Facebook page, which is also Make It Matter Inc. Um, when you see, uh, when you check out Facebook, if you are an avid user or just a casual user, you can scan this QR code right here on the right side of the screen and it will take you directly to our Facebook page. I can um, be reached at my email address, dir.makeitmatter at gmail.com. And or if you have any questions and you'd like to talk to me directly, you can call me on my cell phone and the number is listed here below. I want to thank Bethany Baptist Church again for uh, inviting me here today. I really appreciate being here with you and I hope 
that you enjoy the rest of the tea party. God bless and see you next time. I want to leave my footprints on the sands of time. Know there was something that meant something that I left behind. When I leave this world, I'll leave no regrets. Leave something to remember so they won't forget I was here. Hello, and thank you for joining our annual Mission Tea, hosted by our Sisters Who Care Ministry. I'm Reverend Talmush Miller Jr., and just here to help to close up a couple of things and let you guys know that we greatly appreciate your participation. We greatly appreciate you taking time to actually listen and join us for the tea today. We pray that God has moved upon your heart and that he has put something there so that you will be willing to contribute whether it is a financial gift, whether it is coming along and having a helping hand, using your time or your talent, whatever it is, we will be more than grateful to accept that help so that we can continue the movement of God. If you feel that you would like to be able to join us, please do. We'll be looking for you. We feel that it is only appropriate that since we've come to the conclusion of our broadcast, that we end it with prayer. Let's go to the Lord. Master, we thank you so much for such a blessed opportunity as this to continue to remind the people of God that we are here and that though things are going the way that they are, you are still putting something on our heart. You still have a mission for us to accomplish. You want us to reach those who are unreachable. You want us to be able to make an impact for your kingdom and continue the legacy of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Master, we pray, Father God, for those who are willing to step up 
and to take part of the thing that you yourself are guiding and leading. We pray, Father God, that you give wisdom to the leadership here, Father God. We pray, Master, that you continue to provide resources, Father God, so that we will be able to move forward boldly and be relentless in our pursuit of making sure that the world knows who your son, Christ Jesus, is. Lord God, I pray that you just continue to move in a way like none other. God, these sisters, Father God, as you did the Israelites, as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and lead them to the land that you desire for them to be, so that they can continue the work until you call them home or until you return, Master. Oh, Lord God, we love you. We thank you. We pray, Father God, that you will allow us to be able to have another tea this time next year, if you see fit, Lord God, where we can continue to show people not only the desire that we have, but the work, Father God, that's been accomplished through your son, Christ Jesus, because we continue to put the plow to the ground, Father God, without looking back. Master, we love you. We thank you, Father God, for everything. All these things we ask of you. In your darling son, Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.